Around two years ago, I finally moved into a brand new house in a brand new building estate in Australia. I was one of the first to have a finished build in the area and was elated to finally gain independence. The first few weeks went by as normal and during that time, I'd often take walks alone with the dog in the afternoons and roam the surrounding estate area. All the roads around us had been partially completed and all the other properties were marked out, but no other houses were built, excluding one that was directly opposite mine. The house looked finished, but there was no driveway laid yet, and from what I could tell, no one lived there. To the left of my house, roughly a few hundred meters away, was a field with a huge hill in it. I later found out that the whole area was council property. Not only was no one allowed to build up there, but the whole hill was basically a no-go zone. For whatever reason, the council just didn't want people on it, so the whole area was surrounded by a huge chain-link fence. The only other noticeable feature in that area was a small, abandoned farmhouse with a shed a few kilometers down the road. I knew nothing about it and often went walking there with a the dog as it gave me something mild to explore amongst the vast nothingness I was living around. The entire place was dilapidated and completely uninhabitable, but it was interesting nonetheless. About a month or two after moving in, I awoke one morning to the sound of a violin. It sounded extremely distant and quite haunting. I actually enjoyed it and assumed that the neighbors opposite me had finally moved in. Excited that I finally had some people to talk to, I peeked out the curtain and saw the house opposite mine was still as vacant as it ever was. I got dressed, but by the time I managed to look outside, the violin had stopped. This happened roughly every second day of the week. The violin would wake me up and then just disappear after about 45 seconds. I'd ignored it to the point where my curiosity simply got the better of me, and the next morning, when I heard the violin playing again, I immediately jumped out of bed, threw on my dressing gown, and shot out the front door. I scoured the early morning surrounding me, and there, up on the hill, was a figure playing a violin. It was barely light, but the person looked quite tall from the distance I was at. And while they were playing, they were doing what could only be described as a waltz-type walk, spinning slowly around a circle as they played. I took my eyes off the person and walked over to pick up the morning paper, and in that ten seconds it took me, I heard the violin stop. When I looked up, I noticed the figure was no longer playing or dancing but was now standing still and, most likely, looking in my direction. It was so dark I couldn't make out anything else, and we both just stood there for half a minute, not moving, before the creeps got the better of me and I went back inside. After that morning, things started happening. On my walks, I began to notice footprints on the surrounding properties that weren't made by me and that I had never seen before. Initially, I just assumed they were from people walking up from the other housing areas down the road. I never awoke to the violin, but I swore I could hear someone walking on the streets next to my bedroom window in the early mornings. However, I never saw anything. I'd also started getting calls at work that would immediately hang up on me, and as a result, I stopped walking up to the abandoned farmhouse as the whole experience had just gotten me shaken. One night, as I was heading to bed, I turned off the television in the living room and again could hear the faint sound of a violin playing. However, it sounded more muffled and rehearsed. Immediately, I froze and a chill flowed through me. Considering it was about midnight and not the usual time I'd heard it playing, I went to the front window and peeked out to see that there was a light in the opposite house of mine. It was clearly a candle as I could see the dim light flicker in the empty window, and the music sounded like it was coming from an old record player. But in the ten minutes I watched, I never saw any movement inside the house. I moved away from the window, sufficiently freaked out, and after another five minutes, I heard the music abruptly stop. I peeked out again to notice that the light was now out. I never saw anyone. I began to become unsettled in the house and would often invite friends over to hang out until late, but of course nothing would ever happen when someone else was with me. I never bothered to tell any of my friends as, without evidence, I figured they'd just give me crap about it and I'd become even more agitated. 
but nothing compared to what happened next. In my living area, the desk sits right next to a small window which looks out to the fence surrounding my property. The steel fence is literally an arm's length from the house and about six feet tall, so I always figured that, unlike most of the other windows, I'd never need to cover this one with a sheet or a blanket because no one could ever see in. I usually had headphones on when I played, and I always had the lights off for no other reason than I preferred to play games in the dark. One night, when I was gaming, I got up and walked into the dark kitchen and got a beer out of the fridge. It was dead silence, excluding the faint sound coming from my headphones. As I closed the fridge and turned around to face the desk, I saw directly out the window two very, very faint lights. I didn't even catch on and immediately started walking back to the desk, fixated on the small glowing balls, and it wasn't until I had my nose almost pressed against the glass that I realized the two lights weren't lights after all. They were eyes. A set of eyes sitting above the fence line, staring wide open at me. They didn't blink. They didn't move. My entire body locked up and all I could do was simply stare back as my brain was still comprehending that there was an actual person looking at me in the scariest way I could ever possibly imagine. I don't know what happened. Either my head kicked into gear or my muscles loosened, but my body automatically collapsed and I fell to the floor, scurrying to hide against the wall away from the window. I could hear my heart beating through the carpet like a drum as I tried to lay as flat as possible. My mind was still processing the sheer severity of the situation when a violin started playing. That freaking violin and the haunting tune it always emitted started up. Except this time, it was directly outside my window and much louder than it had ever been before. The lights were still off and I wanted to get up and turn off the PC screen so I couldn't be seen, but my whole body just wasn't ready to cooperate. Not only was the sound of the instrument extraordinarily loud, but it sounded like it was being played with frustration, the notes being missed frequently and the strings screeching. The pace of it was getting faster and faster, and by this time, my dog Jeb, out in the backyard, had picked up on the situation and registering an unfamiliar sound, gave one solitary deep bark. The violin instantly stopped and the house was finally dead silent. I was still frozen to the carpet, and it wasn't until Jeb gave a second menacing bark that I heard the figure outside the window start to walk away in the direction of my yard. Once that first footstep hit the ground, I instantly thought of the welfare of my best mate, and finally, my head connected with my extremities and my entire body kicked into overdrive. I left the spot I had previously been glued upon and slid across the laminated floor to the back door where Jeb was standing. Staring into the backyard, I ducked to keep low and quietly unlocked and slid open the door. Usually doing so would notify Jeb that he was allowed back inside, but this time when the door opened up, he didn't move an inch and was completely fixated on the pitch black backyard. Everything told me not to go outside, but there was no chance I was letting anything happen to my dog. So I moved out, went behind Jeb, put my hand under his collar, and attempted to back him toward the house. Jeb is pure Labrador and weighs like a sack of sand, so when he doesn't want to move, it takes a sheer force to pull him in the direction you want him to go, and right now, Jeb wasn't going anywhere. I yanked at his scruff, and as I did, he emitted a bark like I had never heard before. A deep, bellowing, you get out of here right now sound that elevated my nerves to an all-time high. We both just stood there, waiting for some form of reply, and I couldn't remember how long we both just stood frozen there. But eventually, I heard footsteps from around the side of the house begin to walk away. But not a simple walk. Almost like whoever was doing it was slowly dancing in a circle, the footsteps keeping to a beat as they drifted away from the house and into the distance. Once I couldn't hear anything, Jeb licked his lips, gave me a look, and wandered back inside. I followed, locked the door behind me, and spent the night reverting to my childlike self, hiding under my bed's covers with my dog. I didn't sleep a wink. And that was the last time I ever saw or heard the violin player.
The following morning, when the sun finally came up, I called into work sick and then called the police. They scoured the lot next to mine and found footprints in the dirt. However, there were so many there that it was impossible to tell whose were whose. The only description I could give the officer was his height. He would have had to have been over six foot at least to stare over that fence at me. Though they explained that he could have possibly been standing on something or on his toes. They also told me that they'd never received a report of anyone playing a violin in the area or anyone being in the fenced off hill either. I essentially looked like a crazy person, but the officers were very nice about the whole thing and offered to patrol the area for the next few nights, which did help put my mind at ease. Nothing else has happened since then. Over the next year or two, people finally started moving in, and I tell them all the story about the figure I saw. Some of which still use it to keep their children in line, which I did find funny. One guy nicknamed the council lot, Violin Hill, and the name has stuck around our street since then. I even spent a period of time scouring the depths of the internet for that violin tune I kept hearing, but could never find it. There were a few classical pieces that seemed reminiscent, but I've since thought that whatever tune was played must have been self-composed, which creeps me out even more, honestly. I'm still in that house, I still tell people the story, and I haven't changed my routine one bit, which has really helped me to block out the fear of the experience. Though I do game with my blinds closed now.